Hey friends, it's Lauren Ursara, and this is the September Satsang. As you can see, I am back in the United States on Mustang Island. And uh, what a trip to fly back from Mexico and then to be here back in the United States, <laughs> figuring out what my natural hair color is, which is uh, red. I still haven't been to a salon, you know, the human stuff. <laughs> I, uh, I know that there's going to be a lot shared today. Um, I have a rainbow of slides for you all, a literal rainbow and a figurative one. Um, to me, the rainbow is about going beyond the land of blue, right? Like Adamus talked about, uh, it's also about going beyond the, the, the crimson too, you know? So it's all, it's and, so focused on the and, you know, we've done allowing, 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 and now it's in the and, you know, and we go beyond whatever color, you know, there was a, a shout a while back that was so good about um, not really fitting in and everyone was wearing these crimson scarves. And I was like, mine, mine's rainbow. I have no crimson scarf. I have a rainbow scarf. I'm actually wearing all my rainbow colors here. Um, don't know exactly what I'm going to say, yet I do know. You know, you know. <laughs> I think you can all relate to that too. So um, the satsang is uh, Sanskrit for truth speak. Uh, I started doing these, I think we're at a year. So on YouTube, there's a year's worth of channels now. Um, and we've been through so much with uh, Moria going his way, a visit from Anna Ra or Mary Magdalene, as you might know her, and now working with Katumi which has been very, very interesting. Katumi was my grandson in one of my lifetimes. Um, so it's really weird because we have a, a, a unique dynamic. Um, just like with Moria, there was not a hierarchy where he's the ascended master and I'm the channeler. It's uh, two friends playing, making jokes at each other's expense and really just enjoying life and what we're creating. Um, the interesting part, sorry, there's something on my computer. The interesting part of the Katumi channels is that we have not set to a specific schedule. Uh, Katumi is highly involved in the Crimson Circle materials, which you can really feel, especially in Keyhawk, where we're all in. I'm all in, Katumi's all in. So we've been putting our energy, you know, voting with our consciousness in, um, the beautiful, beautiful House of Keyhawk Crimson Circle year-long program. Um, just blown away by it. So if you guys are in the House of Keyhawk, I will see you there. Um, please come by and visit. Um, but the Katumi channels have been very interesting because usually he waits until something is really pertinent and then we bring it forward together. Um, we combine consciousness streams and create a cohesive channel. But there's a third stream. It's not just me and him. It's you too. So it's what you're experiencing in a very tangible, relevant way uh, in the corners of your consciousness. And then we bring it forward. So what happens is we'll have um, a topic come up and then it's likely in the next week it will be either in a Keyhawk channel or a shout or whatever. So um, that's been really fun and interesting to play that way. All right, what's next? Oh yeah, and we're tardy. It's not the first Monday of the month, but yesterday was Labor Day, so I gave myself a pass. I had to get a new headset for you all um, so you can hear me properly. Okay. <laughs> the winds of change. So in the last mm, two Keyhawk channels ago, and um, you're allowed to do 250 words or less quotes from there with attribution. So I'm following all the rules. I wear my mask in the store. I'm following all the copyright laws. I'm rule follower, so I can uh, expand from there, right? Because if you don't follow the rules, sometimes you just get cut off immediately. So you work with what you're given. But in that Keyhawk channel on 8820, which I thought was really interesting, um, Adama says, essentially, one needs to go back to the wall of fire, to their personal wall of fire, their energy for their realization. Now, I was listening to this, kind of straightening up my house. I was in Mexico, 
And I, I had to sit down because I was like, that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened when I brought my realization in from out there, over there, to here. And I, I wrote about it in my book. And I'm going to come back to this slide. We'll kind of go back and forth. So I take copious notes, which ends up in books and channels and courses and everything else. And um, most of the patrons that uh, I, we work with and work, notice I said work with, it's very much a peer-to-peer -peer collaboration there, um, not a teacher-student collaboration. We're beyond that. So you guys are really great at taking notes and everything else. So this was the notes that ended up being published in my book in 2019, but um, I'll read it. Why not? And this happened in New Mexico. So we have this beautiful um, image that it very much looks like the experience I had in New Mexico, the bridge and everything, the leaves. Um, I wrote, as I drive across the Grand River and I embrace the fire of forgiveness, I know I will not get burned this time. The waters of the river keep me cool in the fire's wrath, burning up all I thought to be true. Every belief system, every story I ever told about myself or anybody else. And now I know what I am reclaiming has always been mine and mine alone to retreat. All my energy, me in my natural state of being, me before I ever crossed the wall of fire. In that moment on the bridge, I reach through the wall of fire and reclaim my divinity, bringing it to this side of existence. I stare in the face of the fire with a smile. I whisper without force. It's been a while, my friend. And eons have passed since I felt whole, and no time has passed at all. And I was never not whole. It all folds on each other, the streams of awareness running concurrently or simultaneously. Um, I'm almost at the three-year mark. It's been a wild ride, you know? Oh, there were so many belief systems about realization and what it would mean and everything I thought to be true about what it means to be a realized being, including the word realize, has come crashing down, right? So I want to go back to what the wall of fire is. You know, in the original story, in the journey of the angels, oh, we come to the wall of fire, right? When we left oneness, we went to sailed across the edges, the border of oneness, and into what we perceived is a fragmentation of everything of ourselves, a fragmentation we felt, perceived the experience as if we were blown into a million pieces that we had to put back together again, right? So lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes of trying to be whole, trying to return to oneness, and there actually was no one going back to oneness. But in this channel, which was so beautifully done, um, Crimson Circle does an amazing job. Um, Adamus says, you know, instead of viewing it as this fragmentation of self, every thought you ever had, every experience you would ever have in every incarnation, in every future life, past life, all the potentials, possibilities, every dream you ever had, every interaction you ever had, every creation you ever created is all in this wall of fire. And Adamus was saying, one must revisit this wall of fire, which is all your energy. Think about it. And oneness, you are consciousness, right? And then you left oneness and came to the wall of fire and that's where all of your energy exists so new energy is nothing more than removing the duality someone's calling me why <laughs> then removing the duality between the idea that energy and consciousness are separate and not one right? So there's a lot of energy response to my consciousness, which is a beautiful bridge. That is the bridge. Once you cross the bridge into new life, into uh, what we're doing in Patreon is creating Theos, right? Once you cross the bridge, you realize that energy and consciousness are one and the same. And that's what makes new energy, 
right? And it's all yours. There's only one energy and it's all mine. And it's not even separate from my consciousness. It doesn't have to respond to my consciousness because it is my consciousness, right? So that's the, the ultimate bridge to cross, right? That was the Atlantean dream. It's not necessarily just about your realization. It's about understanding that energy and consciousness were never separate. They were always one. Right, so you have this wall of fire, which is your energy and everything that ever exists. And Adamus is saying, you go back to the wall of fire and instead of panicking because you're fragmented or being totally overwhelmed, which is normal and natural, this is what happened to me in my realization. I, I, I stood there at the wall of fire and I was like, wait a second, everything I've been looking for is actually in here. It's not this horrible traumatic experience that I thought it was. And I could reach in and claim my realization. And that's what I did. So realization happened outside of time and space. And then I brought it into this specific point in time and space as the designated ascendee, as the date is set, right? Um, and that's truly what it felt like. I had this experience outside of time and space. And then in the last three years, I've gone about embodying that experience here on earth. It didn't happen all at once. I think it'll happen a lot faster for the rest of you. Each time someone does it, it's like expands the doorway, the potentials and possibilities for it to occur all at once. Now, if you go to the wall of fire, it's not just your realization in there, right? Your free energy vessels in there. Um, the creation of your last lifetime and what that looks like. Theos. The experience of the new earth, specifically Theos, is in that wall of fire, right? So don't limit yourself to your realization. There's so much more, you know? Realization is not that big a deal in the end. It's huge for the human, right? Because the human has the realization that it's already realized. <laughs> and then you go about from there. It makes things a lot easier right? There's not so much up and down, high and low. There's not a whole lot of distractions anymore. So it does make things a lot easier. But you, you can go to that wall of fire and you can bring more than your realization in. You can bring in new life, right? It comes to you. So something to play with and experience is this reimagining the wall of fire. And, you know, I will say that when this happened to me, I, the only information I had on the wall of fire was that when we crossed it, we broke into a million pieces. And then I had this experience where I was looking at it in such clarity that I was like, that didn't actually happen, right? And instead, I just couldn't handle my own grandness. So it made me go a little crazy, right? So your grandness is back here at the wall of fire, right? And I will say, this happened naturally. There was no materials to support it um, at the time. You know, there wasn't this Keyhawk channel. Um, so it can happen naturally. Um, however, I think it is, this is why I share. I think it's so important to have, you know, we go beyond qualia, right? You know, and if you go into it, like if any of us go into a bookstore, to look at a reference section on what's happening to me. There's not gonna be a book there. <sighs> my book's not at Barnes and Noble. <laughs> and my book doesn't even cover all the stuff that has happened since. Um, you guys are writing your journey down or creating ways to share it. I think that's beautiful. Um, what do I wanna say here? This is gonna happen naturally. However, it's really, really nice to have the backup stuff, you know, and which is why I continue to write everything, everything down. And uh, I will say in my, the biggest lesson I've learned since realization is that you don't need ego to create, right? You can use your ego to create. It's a driving force, the we go instead of the ego. But the most beautiful creations to me, and that's a matter of opinion, are the ones where you don't need ego or force to create. The ego uses force, drive, drive, 
drive, ambition to create. And the ego is not needed. You can allow things to unfold. You create by being and not doing. And you can feel the difference. It's really, truly beautiful. All right. So, um, on our Patreon page, which is about 104 people, give or take, um, we are really in the I am forgiveness. And um, many people took the online threshold course. You know, I'm a huge advocate. I advocate for taking it in my book. I say, you know, it really helps bring the, the human along. Favorite of all the Crimson Circle materials. So many took the course, um, some for the second time. And um, it's interesting because right before Threshold came out, Katumi and I did a channel in which we talk about the parallels between the last Atlantean lifetime before the fall and this last human lifetime and how the two intersect and merge, right? So you had many, 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 many lifetimes in Atlantis, more in Atlantis than you've had in this modern human era. And so the two meet in that channel. Um, for most of the patrons on the page, um, Atlantean memories are resurfacing. I've even had, I went another round with the dragon clarity um, on the standardization of the human body. And I realized that if, until you allow that, I am forgiveness for your role, your specific role, in the standardization of the human body, which created this illusory prison of being stuck in this body. You know, you go back to what happened in Atlantis. I mean, we dissected bodies to try to find the soul and, you know, really reinforce the masculine and feminine divide, created the pleasure center. I don't want to get too graphic because it's these Atlantean memories are very graphic, but the whole message of everything, especially in Katumi and I's last channel is, I have never done anything wrong and no one has ever done anything wrong to me. It's a sensation. But as I went through this deep dive with the dragon clarity again, I realized that so much of what happens and so much of the self sabotage that keeps people from allowing the realization comes from this deep seated guilt and shame of what occurred in Atlantis. And uh, then the understanding of we were just doing our best and we may have messed things up, but all is well in all of creation. So the Katumi channel takes us back to that moment of the fall of Atlantis, which was the return to nothingness, which was totally appropriate, which instead of trying to do this collective ascension, we found out that this needs to be left up to the individual, to the individual sovereign, I am God also. Right? So the fall of Atlantis allowed us to return to this nothingness, the nothing, right? And allow our unique, sovereign, inadmittable consciousness realization rather than trying to do it as a group. So there's some traumas associated with that. That is where the I am forgiveness and the dragon clarity come in and, you know, the worthiness of allowing and accepting the realization comes in. It's truly all relates back to this, right? So there's other trauma points. Um, leaving oneness was one, you know, like I talked about, I left oneness and I fragmented myself at the wall of fire when really it was just my own energy, right? So you reimagine all these things in a new light and you, you're seeing through the eyes of the divine rather than the eyes of the limited human, right? So another thing that is a trauma point of people that I've worked with, and this is where, I, this is what I'm good at. Am I good at human relationships? Probably not. <laughs> you know, you know, am I a great surfer? Not really. What am I good at? What's my goodness? I am really good at helping people move through these Atlantean hangups and what happened prior to Atlantis. So leaving oneness, coming into physical form for the first time, highly traumatic for many people, so much guilt and sh shame associated with that. Um, you know, when I first began my I am forgiveness journey, um, I, you know, Adamus in Threshold, and I wrote about it in my book, said, what are, you, what are you allowing forgiveness for? And I'm like, I've never felt human guilt. I have no idea, right? Get sent to the bathroom, I don't know. <laughs> 
you know, what I came up with was just forgiveness for being human, right? Well, claim to my, things don't happen in a linear fashion around here, you know? I know you guys know that, right? And uh, so two months after my realization, I, the memory surfaced of Maury and I standing there at the end of Atlantis. And we were the ones who made a decision to kind of pull the plug, right? We're going to end this whole civilization. Millions of people died. And this is way out there. If you're not a Chambra, it's probably not going to make any sense. Um, but I have to go there. That's my job. That is the divine will flowing through. So um, two months after my realization, I, I called Adamus and I said, Adamus, I know what I'm allowing forgiveness for or what I allowed it for because it had already taken place. It's just my human perception caught up with it. I said, I am allowing forgiveness, the I am forgiveness to permeate my beingness for the end of Atlantis and everything that happened prior to that. I could, I had already allowed it, but then I could articulate it. And I always said, I don't want to have past life, whatever memories, and which are now simultaneous life memories resurface unless there's a purpose. And I knew instantly the purpose of remembering this was to share it with you all so you know you're not alone. Um, a lot of people on Patreon are emailing me. I know what I did. I was a recruiter for the experiments. I was a doctor in the experiments on the human form, right? And a lot of people say, I've never felt guilt, right? And now I know what that is. So when you start to really understand this guilt, that is part of the I am forgiveness process, right? So there's the shame and there's the guilt and the guilt gets transmuted into through the I am forgiveness permeation of your body of consciousness, right? So when someone says, I actually feel the guilt, like I really truly feel it and I'm crying my eyes out, I want to clap and Katumi wants to clap because that means you're allowing yourself to feel everything, which is how you get to that no self that I talked about in the January satsang right? Until you hit that no self, you cannot have the new energy creator experience where consciousness and energy are one. You cannot allow your realization because you don't feel worthy of it yet. It's coming, right? So this is really, truly beyond any kind of modern human. And I'm talking about modern being <laughs> the beginning of this human era to now the age of the machines. Um, it's beyond a human guilt and shame. It's deep. It's guttural. It's ancient. Right? So when you're allowing the I am forgiveness, it can start to, your mind will start to talk crazy. Um, one of the tips that uh, Katumi and I came up with for the people on Patreon doing this where, you know, don't believe any of the stories your brain is telling you <laughs> what your mind is telling you during this phase because it's just going to start talking and making up all sorts of stuff right so part of the allowing just allowing that mind to go atlantean mind to go totally berserk without attaching on to anything allow 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 it's about allowing the guilt and shame allowing the guilt and shame it feels like a free fall there's a lot of gravity involved in allowing right all this stuff right memories resurface i feel crazy my body's breaking down. Am I going to be able to handle it? Will I die? Right? Which is all natural. It's part of allowing. Allowing can be really intense. It's like the, the dragon is breathing its fire in your face. And the dragon is an expression of you. It's not an outside entity. It doesn't come from somewhere else. It could almost compare it to the wall of fire, right? It's like just incinerating everything that is not true. Right? So when you get your that fire breathing in your face, that's a great thing, right? It's totally counterintuitive to what mm, spiritual awake people do. Oh, if you're not in, in, you know, if you're not in total alignment, you need to do some more work and there's a lesson to be learned. We have karma to clear. You guys know better, <laughs> right? Okay, so if allowing is that free fall and the and, right, is when you take that deep breath. You suspend an air. It's like being under the banyan tree floating, right? It's beyond gravity, right? And in the end, you see the big picture, the 360 degree view 
oh, I'm allowing this I am forgiveness not only for me, but for the people who will come after me. Oh, I'm not the only one here, right? As the Dragon Clarity came through in its second round, I was going through these body experiments and, you know, I was kind of all in. I, I need to have the experience that you all are having, right? Tunnel vision, me, 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 I, 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 this is what happened, you know, and it's all me and I, which is totally appropriate. Don't let anyone tell you different. And then, I t and that's the allowing, right? And then I take a deep breath and I look around. Hmm. Okay, how many people are here? How many souls? How many consciousnesses are here? There's about 50. Everyone's kind of doing their own deep dive, digging, 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 digging. And then I realized that my job, <laughs> my divine will duty, being a vessel for the will of God over here, is to sit back and say, I know, and you've got this, right? So then I'm in my dream walker mode. I am dream walking all of these souls through the I am forgiveness. I've been at it for, for five years and I also went through the whole I am forgiveness right after the fall of Atlantis, but I wasn't in physical form. You know, you could take your realization back to all these different points. When you first reached the wall of fire, right after the fall of Atlantis, Right, so I'm there right after the fall of Atlantis and I went through all of this, but I didn't have a physical form. And now here we are doing it in physical form, which was the true Atlantean dream, right? So all of a sudden you take a deep breath, everything gets real calm. There's motion without movement. This is the and. And in the and you see all these simultaneous points of realization, all the simultaneous points of this dragon clarity, I am forgiveness experience. Right? So we're going to focus more on the and, right, in Patreon, which is um, something that the Crimson Council came up with. And Katumi, you know, brought, as the representative over here, brought back and said, we're going to and it, and it, and it. And so um, while everybody here has experienced the and, and I've experienced the and, it's not just about the and in perspective, right? The and in perspective would be like, you know, removing duality from experience. I had this conflict with another human being and, and I also realized that this conflict was an illusion and nobody's right or wrong. That would be an and in perception. What I'm talking about is an and that is an and in time, an and in the ex that expands beyond the illusion of Maya. So we're going beyond time, we're going beyond physicality, um, we're in simultaneous realities all at once. And one of the master's lives, uh, I think it was number two, um, Adamus defined uh, a master as someone who is in 12 simultaneous realities at once, right? Which is something that is a normal daily occurrence for me. And it's one infinite now, which is something Katumi's very much focused on in, in the channels that we bring. So um, we're going to really start to focus on the and, not in perspective, but in um, an experience beyond, <laughs> beyond human comprehension. The human's coming along, right? The body's coming along. The human's coming along. It's going to start to understand all of this. But as long as the Atlantean mind is still unintegrated, you kind of have to go beyond it. Eventually the mind will come along with you and it will be able to understand at least at a conceptual level what's going on, right? So then once the mind calms down and understands, once you go move from Atlantean mind, which is the same thing as mass consciousness mind, to sovereign mind, the mind becomes this beautiful tool of, and it, it, it melts and merges with your creational intelligence. Right? So the mind is not something you have to bypass, right? Or to quiet or to sit and try to make blank, right? The mind becomes this very useful tool of energy responding to your consciousness, right? 
And then once you realize the mind is energy responding to your consciousness and not your aspects and not to mass consciousness, right? And then you start to have the experience of energy and consciousness coming together. And that would be the creational intelligence was just something. So in Patreon, we're going to go focus on the and we're going to talk about creational intelligence. Um, wisdom is great, right? But I think we all got wisdom down. We've got the wisdom from all our lifetimes and everything else, which is all the soul is. The soul is not an entity. The soul is a body of wisdom. Also in the January satsang, which uh, Katumi is saying, push that, push that, push that. Okay, so here we are. <laughs> so this is a kind of an accompaniment with that, right? So um, wisdom's there. It's intact. It is a wisdom is a thread woven into the tapestry of you, the God also in the third circle of creation and embodied realization. The soul is a thread. With its soul is a body of wisdom. The wisdom's there, right? And creational intelligence, like the free energy vessel, already exists, but it's not woven in quite yet, right? So we're going to be weaving in the creational intelligence and the free energy vessel, which the biology integrates into the free energy vessel, but that even that is kind of a dichotomy that doesn't capture the whole picture, right? Because the mind wants to break things down into little categories. My biology will integrate into my free energy vessel rather than the other way around. Your consciousness is not going to come into this biology, right? How would that happen? Okay, so we got that concept, right? Which is still kind of a dual dichotomy concept, Right. But if we look at the tapestry of this beautiful new life we're creating, right, and as each person creates their own sovereign new life, that is how we are creating new earth theos, right? This is what the sovereign collective is about. Um, I am so in the big picture, I really wish I could, could show it, but I know what it's like when you're in the, the tunnel and it's only me, 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 I, 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 my story, my story, my suffering, my suffering, my story, my suffering, my story, my suffering. My story, my suffering. It's a necessary part of the journey, but in any given moment of suffering and everything else, it's not even about taking your brain and perception shifting, right? This is about a great lean back, a great lean back into seeing the big picture and your sovereign role in it, right? It's the micro and the macro in a simultaneous kaleidoscopic experience, right? I'm like, Kitsumi, does that make any sense? And he said, they'll feel the sensation. They will feel the sensation, even if the words don't make sense. Trust, trust, trust. Still learning a, a lot about the my learning curve is how to communicate. It's everything in my life. How do I communicate the uncommunicatable, right? How do I provide relatability to the unrelatable, right? Oh, it's the only reason that keeps, it's the only thing that really truly sparks it, you know? <sighs> yep, I feel good when I'm here. That's what it feels like when the divine will is flowing. And you. this is the other thing. It's like in the January satsang and in the February satsang, any suffering you still have comes from this total illusion of human free will and letting it go, right? So when you're in that divine will and you're flowing, this is where everything's going to happen for you. Right, all those potentials and possibilities from the wall of fire you want to bring in all happen in the divine will experience. Right, the human comes along and brings its superpower of being able to perceive. The human being able to perceive an experience creates the experience, right? So, human is needed, but human is not in control. So, that's one of the other threads we weave in instead of calling it my human. In the Patreon page, we call it humanity, right? Humanity is a thread that's woven into the tapestry of self. The body of wisdom you call the soul is one of the threads in the tapestry of self. Now we're going to weave in creational intelligence. Now we're going to weave in the free energy vessel. 
Now we're going to weave in new life. Yeah. Okay. The Katumi channels. This is what the sense of focus has been on. And <laughs> Katumi, namaste. Um, so the newest channels that are up are session five, which is crossing the bridge to Theos. That's a really cool experience. Session six, these are all experiential, right? They aren't lectures. They are deep experiences of you with you. You little lowercase you meeting uppercase you, right? The return to self. Remember, it's about going from here to over there here to over there and then eventually here and over there meet crossing the bridge to theos session six meeting the future self and the simultaneous now right and we did that one on july 4th and of course you know that was something similar in the the key hook channels around the same time i never get this stuff from from the channels, the, cha the Kehoe channel happens after I bring it in. So I feel very, um, very much like we're doing a sovereign dance together, right? And I, I feel really good about that and, and, and it feels sweet and uh, feminine and uh, not feminine as opposed to masculine, but feminine in, in its wholeness, right? which is what I, what I feel inside myself, her, her. And um, I am her God. <laughs> I, I am she. I am God also. I am she also. And um, so we have the meeting, the future self, and the simultaneous now. And then session seven, which is groundbreaking, um, Katumi's like, this is really important. Okay. So it's really important. It, it even took an, I even met a new piece of myself in this. Um, it's very rare that I meet a new piece of myself. So when it happens, it's not like, it used to be like, oh my God, I didn't realize I had this aspect to integrate. I'm so dumb. No, when I meet a new piece of myself now, I'm like, oh, I get that sparkle in my eye and my face lights up because it's like, oh, it's an old friend returning home. I'm very excited. It doesn't happen that often. So I met a new piece of myself while while recording this channel. And it talks about no thing in the Atlantean dream, but this is about I am forgiveness. And you have your, la so instead of, we had the Lauren 2020, right? And the meeting the future self, and then met myself, the same self. And this is for you too, in 20, the year 2023. And the two of us sit at the table and have a discussion right? It's a great experience, right? So in session seven, Katumi and I do the last lifetime here on earth right now, this last lifetime, which is kind of, last lifetime is very limiting. Um, but that's the language people are using right now. It's not really your last lifetime. Okay. It's the designated ascendee life, lifetime. So um, the last lifetime implies a linearity and a finality, and there's no, no such thing. So the designated ascendee lifetime meets the last lifetime in a linear view of Atlantis. Meet the, and they sit at the table and have a conversation. So all of these sessions and this I am forgiveness, right? And this going beyond linear time and space, uh, linear time and physical space, right? It suspends into the infinite now, right? Into the simultaneous reality experience, right? So that goes, that's how you cross the bridge to Theos, right? So all of these three channels interweave together and they kind of create a triangle, right? So that's how we're doing the channels on the website is if they're all related, we put them into one bundle and you can go buy them. It's $55 for all three channels. It has an English transcript. So you get the recording with the graphics and the transcript. Um, obviously patrons have access to all of these. Um, you can buy all the channels on the website too. I think there, and there's also a 5% discount code on there. If you sign up for the newsletter, I hate the marketing games, but you know, <laughs> here I am. Alrighty. 
So just to recap, so allowing the I am forgiveness is what creates the bridge to Theos. Um, in our third installation of channels, we offer you three audio channel, audio channel videos backed with visual graphics, PDF transcript. These three channels create a sensation beyond time and space in which the Atlantean last lifetime meets the last human lifetime and the future simultaneous self all in one infinite now moment of embodied realization. Time is a delivery mechanism for energy. ASG said in our, our recent Keyhawk channel. I love that. Um, so we build on this concept through the direct application that unifies the ultimate duality that energy and consciousness are separate. Um, when energy and consciousness become one, all the potential possibilities, everything that ever existed and will ever exist come together in a glorious display of your own admittable consciousness, which kind of relates to this reimagining the wall of fire. So we put all the little sparks come together, new neurons, new neurons, new neurons, <laughs> new neurons are being created. The mind is going to come along and sovereignty it will become this beautiful mechanism for creational intelligence. This is the transhuman species, <laughs> homo Christos. This is the transhuman species that Adamus tried to tell us about in the whole Shoud series called the transhuman series, right? So all of these little thoughts start connecting. Connect the dots, la, la, la. Okay. <laughs> right. All right. Ooh, am I going to do this today? Okay. So another thing that I have been personally exploring, this is not my duty to share with everybody. This is just me in my personal space. What we talk about when we talk about love, right? This is what I've been experiencing in my personal bubble. Right, I have the 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 public bubble and the person who's interacting with a hundred unique consciousnesses coming together in the sovereign collective, which Patreon hosts us right now, um, and the Banyan Tree hosts us. You know, and then I'm working with all these other people in the dream state, people who do not provide energetic exchange. That's okay. I love you anyway. <laughs> I'm busy, you know. And then I find my own sovereign space simultaneously right it's not like i'm here and then i put myself here this is one of my simultaneous realities i've been exploring about what really is love right and i'm having these incredible experiences with it um what we talk about when we talk about love is a book title um it's a series of short stories by a beautiful writer named raymond carver and uh, and he talks about how basically what we call love on earth is really kind of strange right it's there's conflict and resolution and conflict and resolution and someone treats me like shit but I love them anyway you know so I went through this whole thing about how love has gotten so convoluted so dualistic and so conditional right if you do this then I'll love you if you don't do this I won't love you love is something that is an action I give you a lot of it and then I take it away right and you know, really going through this and I almost got angry. I can't believe what's passing for love on this planet. And then I started to realize my role in the creation of this as I was in Atlantis in these experiments, you know, it became a currency, right? Love is a currency, Ooh, right? And then it all goes back to the, you know, you know what it's like when Adamus feels like he's talking to you directly, you know, in uh, Master's Life 3, the embodiment one. He said, one cannot know love until they experience the ecstasy of the I am. You know, and I've used this quote a million times and, you know, we all wrote it, right? Adam, us. <laughs> Adam, us. You know, and... <coughs> you know, in the January satsang, I really, I go back to like, I speak about discovering this God also. And I'll realize the only true capacity to love comes from the space, like to actual love. And it's not even love anymore. It's beyond love, right? It's the ecstasy of I exist. And it's, this creates the space in which love can flow, right? And the other, I, you know, I'm realizing my own limits. And that's like I told you, if I discover a new piece of myself, my eyes light up. When I discover a limit within myself, the eye sparkle happens, right? The smile. Ah. Oh, I just discovered a limit because as soon as you discover the limit, 
being really honest with yourself, it's so key, it dissolves and then it opens everything up for new. So discovering a limit within yourself is a beautiful, beautiful experience, right? Rather than it being something to, you know, sling the whip on your back. Oh, I am so limited. No. Allow the eye sparkle. <laughs> right? So I was sitting in a session with someone. We were talking about the dragon and um, I felt Moria behind me. He's around a lot. He's not working. We're not in a business relationship, but we've just been hanging out a lot. You know, I don't have a lot of peers in my life. And um, he put his hand on my back, right? And I felt it like it went in, into my back, free energy vessel, into my back. And he said, that's what love is. That's what love feels like. And, okay, I have never, ever felt anything like that, ever. Not in my realization, not in any experience I've had since. And I realized that I'm not as far along as I think I am, which is another eye sparkling experience, because that means there's more to explore, right? I'm not as far along as I thought I was. I still had this really deep... resistance to allowing my free energy body, my biology to completely integrate into the free energy vessel because I still feel some level of unworthiness because of the experiments that happen in the standardization of the human body. Bringing the mind along was no problem for me. I was not a headband wearer um, in Atlantis. Um, those who are really battling with the mind, most of them put on the, the headband in Atlantis and so that's kind of their experience is the mind it's harder for the mind to come along well i'm starting to realize that um really accepting the fact that i really messed with this masculine feminine stuff and um pleasure response center in the body and you know i as i got off the airplane in the united states in los angeles i was looking around and everybody was satisfying that pleasure response, right? And I was like, oh my God, I created this. I was the one who created this horrible Pavlovian dog response. I think most of you guys know what Pavlov's dog is, you know, it's the, you get a, hear a noise and you get a food and you start to salivate. So even if the food's not there, you hear the noise and you start salivating, you're a programmed robot, right? You know, you see a, a guy and who's attractive and your body has a response whether you want it to or not. And I started to realize how much guilt and shame I had around that. And here we go, back with the dragon. And again, it's not something to beat yourself up on when you realize the limits. You get the eye sparkle. <laughs> and you go, oh yeah, here we go, right? So this dragon comes and visits and visits. And I realize that not only am I holding back this... Uh, free energy vessel experience and I'm not as far along as I thought I was big deal there's no ego left right so when the ego is gone you go oh I'm not as far along as I thought I was all right let's let's go further rather than you know you see people like really beating each other up online you know oh, come on guys right I don't need you you know <laughs> you this is where friend, really good friendship comes in. And that's what the Patreon page is all about. You know, someone could say, God, I really saw my limit. And everyone goes, oh yeah, I understand that. Instead of like, well, have you looked at this or you didn't, you know, it's like this e once the ego just relaxes and calms down, you don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. You get the eyes barked. <laughs> I love that. It's just fun. Katumi and I joke about this stuff a lot. He's like, you got the sparkle in your eye. And I'm like, because there's so much more. But what I realize is until I have this full free energy vessel, there's no way that I can actually um, have that love experience, that, uh, that sensation of love experience that Moria showed me and keep it because this biological body just wouldn't be able to handle it. And it goes back into its Pavlonian dog response. There's a bell that rings. I'm salivating, you know, you know, a hot guy walks by. <laughs> Here we go again, you know, uh, so really starting to see like 
the intensity and how deeply rooted this stuff that we created in Atlantis is, you know? And then you just allow, 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 and allow, 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 and, right? The dance, and then you're allowing, and you're in the end, and you know, you've got all these little parts and pieces coming back, and it's this beautiful display of you, right? And the messier it is, the more grand it is, because it's not following a pattern. The messier it is, the more beautiful you are, because you're being yourself. <sighs> if everything's in a nice, neat little bucket of order, you are so not doing it. I'm just going to say it. It's not what it looks like. Cloud class info. You know, my personality... <laughs> My divine personality is such as to do something and then it's just done. And everything has its, every creation I have has its sovereignty. I have to go back to my book to read it, to, un, to know what's in it. I have to go back to the cloud class to know what's in it. Um, you know, the words, not the sensation of it. Because it's, once I do something, it's done. I, my identity is not wrapped up in it. However, Katumi is like, and you still have to play the game sometimes. Okay, so here's my game playing. So I have an overview of the, the three courses that are up on the website. The out, Art of Allowing that um, I did with Moria uh, is a great addition to anyone integrating the aspect that is choosing realization and allowing all identity surrounding that to return to its neutral and natural state. If you are obsessed with where's my realization, where's my realization, and all is realization, realization, you know, this class is for you, right? Because as long as you're obsessing about it, it's out in the future. You have the horse and the carrot situation, right? So like we talked about with the reimagining the wall of fire, you know, you can't keep it out there in the future. You bring it in. And until you, this aspect, choosing realization integrates, you can't be a new energy creator either. So this is just helping that along. What is allowing? And what are we really allowing? What's the soul do? And every class has an introduction to new energy creation in it, in an applicable way, in a tangible way. This is what new energy is. So every class ends like that, all three. Um, and each takes it further. So the Tales of an Aspect Integrated class is like the graduate course for aspectology. I really think you need aspectology to take this. Need is not the right word. I would highly recommend it. It's going to be a lot more fulfilling, right? So the art of allowing, you definitely, you know, everything here, it's like I can, I hate to say it, but I can really tell when someone's like done the sexual energy school, the Crimson Circle, I would never, I don't require anything. Um, I have no partnership with Crimson Circle. I have no interaction with anybody who works there. Um, I just am involved in the material making. Um, so uh, this is how to move beyond a repeating storyline permanently. It's told by Anna Ra, Anna Ra, which is one of her, one, Anna Ra is a consciousness. One of her incarnations was Mary Magdalene, right? And she said if, if she can move beyond her story, anybody can move beyond their story. If she can move beyond all the wounds and the heartache of being Mary Magdalene, anybody can move beyond their story. Um, navigating the void is the perfect course for what comes after threshold or I am forgiveness, right? Once everything is burned down, how do you navigate the empty? This is my favorite course. I love this course. I'm in the process with, um, another person of going through and making the transcript and then it's going to be translated into a few other languages. And, uh, I love this course. It's good. And it was Moria, Eminem, <laughs> I have in there, uh, Kut Humi, and uh, myself. And we all wove it together. And I love this because it has Moria's professor lecture style. It has Katumi's, Moria always brings a really great professor-like presentation. Katumi is the master of creating experience, right? And then I have this I'm in a freaking body and I know what it feels like to go through this stuff. So I even create like, so when I first did the course, it was just the slides and the materials. And then I started to feel everybody taking it, having this similar experience. So I created something like a Marab, not a Marab, not going to violate anybody's copyright. 
a guided experience, like a dream walk experience in which um, I walk you through what it feels like to enter the void in peace and understanding rather than in fear and panic because it can really create that from the human perspective. So each con course contains an introduction to what new energy actually is in application rather than theory. So at the end of each course, we do that. So this is huge perspective shifts and kaleidoscopic multiple reality, multiple simultaneous reality, multiple simultaneous sensation experiences. Um, I'm very, 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 I don't know what's the right word to me. I'm very proud of my work. I think it's good. I stand by it. Each of these courses are their own entities. I've allowed them complete sovereignty, but they're there. And I do have um, a discount code and patrons always get 10% off. Um, yeah. All right. If you happen to enjoy the channel or all of our stuff on YouTube, which is a lot now, um, you can provide an exchange in the following ways. You can send PayPal, you can Venmo. Um, on my website, I have a little donate button. Um, if you sign up for the newsletter, you do get that 5% discount for if you want to buy the Katumi channels or whatever else. Um, we do have overhead costs here. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, the goal is to always <laughs> bring in a little more than I give out um, as far as energy exchange, uh, as far as money, because I want to be able to keep um, producing more and more stuff. And that costs uh, green energy. <laughs> Anyhow, I really appreciate that. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel not drained. You know, I wasn't um, honoring my worth there because of some Atlantean guilt. And I realized like, okay, I need to allow um, abundance in this area too, right? And so that's been a huge eye sparkling event for me. Oh shit, <laughs> there's another limit. Um, this is a pause to say thank you to all who gather under the banyan tree in our sovereign collective. I don't really have to add words to it, you guys all know. Thank you. We have one more. Okay, so the in addition to the Katumi channels in Patreon, we also have our monthly calls. We have the Sensuality of Embodiment series for um, patrons at the $33 level or higher, and uh, all kinds of stuff happens in that. Um, those tiers of super supporter, energetic exchange, etc. We have that's our really involved community. And everybody kind of has gotten to know each other. And it's very beautiful, creative, sovereign dynamic. And we are five tenants of further is kind of our next. We had the, the, um, the four imperatives for new energy creatorship. That's all public on the website now. Um, so we worked with these four imperatives for months, 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 and now we're starting the five tenets further. And number one was playing with the illusions of Maya. So before time even came up in Crimson Circle, we were talking about time as a creative mechanism and um, time being malleable. So then it shows up in Keyhawk and Shouds and whatever else. But we're playing not only with time, we're playing with uh, all of the illusions of Maya, right? gravity being my favorite. <laughs> so we'll talk more and more about the gravity and using it in your creative favor, which is one of my favorite things that I play with all the time. It's how I brought my book in. It's how I get the channels in. It's how I play with Katumi. And uh, it's how I bring something in from the wall of fire, using gravity in your creative favor. Um, Anyhow, it's good to be back in the United States. It's, I feel like I have a different relationship with you guys when I'm here. Um, wearing my rainbow shirt. Anyhow, um, feedback always welcome. Emails, um, I love that. And uh, if you have questions or you just wanna say hi, I love that. Um, I'm still learning and how I interact with people in the dream state. So if you have a dream with me in it, I would very much appreciate a note. I'm trying, trying, I'm allowing my human to re perceptions to really come along. So a lot of times I have the memory of being in the dream and what it was. And then I get an email from someone and I hadn't remembered until they sent the email. So um, that's another thing where I'm, 
expanding on my limits and getting the sparkle in my eye, you know? So I hope you do the same. Like if you start to see your limits or where you've kind of been lying to yourself, <laughs> that you see it as an opportunity to go further, right? Rather than you did something wrong or bad, right? That's, this is the fun part. After your realizations, shit gets boring, right? <laughs> You're like, what's the point in being here? I don't want to create another dumb human experience or repeat a pattern. What the hell am I going to do? You know, so finding things that bring that sparkle to your eyes are really going to make staying on earth a lot more pleasant. So whatever your, whatever brings the sparkles to your eye, I, I, I hope you uh, nourish that and nourish yourself and be kind to yourself. See you guys next month. How do you turn this thing off? <laughs>